Hey, welcome to the Draft Academy. My name is Mike, and in this video, we're going to be covering the basics of recursion. So, what is recursion? Well, it's actually a way of designing functions in programming where they call themselves. And recursion is always tricky for beginners. It's kind of hard to wrap your head around it because generally, if the function is calling itself, you have to think about the function at different levels of nesting. So a good example that people always use for recursion are sort of Russian nesting dolls. So in this case, we have these little dolls and they're basically smaller versions of each other. And that's essentially what a recursive problem is, is it's a problem where in order to solve the problem, you have to solve smaller versions of the same problem. So in this case, each Russian nesting doll looks the same and that's the same with recursion. So I'm gonna show you a couple examples of recursive functions and then we're actually gonna build the classic version of a recursive function, which is the factorial. And we'll explain how all that works. So the simplest recursive function is the countdown. And the countdown essentially just counts down from a number. So we see this function here and this is just in JavaScript. It's called countdown and it takes one argument which is called n. Now, if n is less than or equal to zero, it's done counting, so we've reached the bottom. But otherwise, if n is greater than zero, we console log it out and then we call it again, but this time we call it with whatever number was passed in, that n, minus one. So you'll notice here that inside of the countdown function, we're actually calling the countdown function, and that is where recursion takes place. Now there's a couple things here that I want you to notice. One is what's called the base case. And the base case is right here. It's where n is less than or equal to zero. This is where if we call the function and n is less than or equal to zero, we don't call it again. So we don't go and like re-recurse, or in other words, we don't call countdown one additional time. So for this function, whatever number you pass it, like if I pass it a five, it's called countdown with n, which is five. So then we come down to the else, and then we call it with four, once again, we come down to the else with three, come down to the else, two, one, until we get to zero, and then it would print out done. So that's kind of what a recursive function is, is it's one of those functions where it just calls itself. Now, the classic version of the recursion function that you'll find in a lot of courses is the factorial. And the factorial is denoted with five exclamation point, And it's where you take a number like five, and then you multiply it by all of the numbers that come uh, below it, right? So five times four times three times two times one is equal to 120. And then same with four, same with three. So you can see how we can do factorials here. This is a perfect example of a recursive function because essentially what we need to do is multiply the number by one number less. So if you remember in countdown, we are passing in n minus one, it's gonna be something similar for the factorial. So now we're gonna head over to the code and we're actually gonna write the factorial function. So I'm just over here in JavaScript and I'm gonna create the function factorial and I'm gonna set it equal to this. So factorial is gonna take a number just like that n. Now it's gonna be kind of similar to the countdown function. We're gonna have the base case, which is where we stop recursing. In other words, the place where we don't call the function and then we're gonna have the other case. So we wanna stop calling this function if n is less than or equal to one. So if n is less than or equal to one, we don't need to do anything because remember, what we're doing here in factorial is we're multiplying each number by the number below it. But if we get down to one, it's always just gonna give us back that same number, so we don't need to do that. So here, if n is less than or equal to one, we're going to return one, which just means we're going to return the number one, which when we multiply by it, it, it we can't really go lower than that, right? Because if we multiply by zero, then we'll end up getting zero. So then otherwise, in this second case, we can return n times factorial of n minus one. So you can think about this, like if we go through this the first time, right? And we have a five, this would be then five times four. Actually, it would be five times four factorial. If we had four, then it would be four times three factorial, etc. If we go back over here, you'll see that's exactly what we would get. So five times four factorial would be five times 24, which would give us that 120. So maybe the math is a little bit confusing, but hopefully you can see how the recursion comes into play, right? So down here, this is what we recall the recurse case, 
where we would actually call the function again. And then up here, this is what we call the base case where we stop recursing. And a lot of times these recursive functions, they can get pretty complicated because you'll have all sorts of different cases that you're trying to keep it, keep track of. And then you have to kind of hold all of that in your head at the same time. But this is a perfect example that just kind of demonstrates simple recursion and the beauty of it. Now, a lot of times with these recursive functions, people will say that they're very elegant, they're very simple, but they can be kind of hard, like I said, to wrap your head around. So what you should do is just play around with this function and then also play around with that countdown function and really get comfortable calling the function from inside, okay? But otherwise, that's gonna do it for me. So now we've learned a little bit about basic recursion. I hope you liked the video. If you did, leave a like and subscribe. And otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.